So what is scalable, man uh, scalable capital? We're a digital investment manager, or what the press also like to call a robo-advisor. And what we do is, is we build and manage a globally diversified ETF portfolio for you, but we do it using a proprietary risk management technology. We're a young company. We've, we founded the company in December 2014, but we've since grown to a team of over 30 people. And we have an FCA license, so we're managing retail money in the UK and also active in Germany with a German regulatory license there as well. So these ETF portfolios that we build and manage, we use ETFs because it allows us to get global diversification, which is a central tenant for good long-term wealth creation. So we use a, a universe of 14 ETFs which allow us to invest into uh, asset classes such as stocks, bonds, real estates, and commodities, and we do it in the US, in Europe, in Asia, and in the emerging markets. And we pick the best ETFs available to us to get access to each of these asset classes. So we're making sure that we're picking the one which has the lowest cost. We're making sure that we're picking the one that has the, the highest liquidity. We're making sure that we're picking the one that replicates an index as best as possible. There's no fancy stuff or hidden fees going on. But the problem with ETFs is that it's a passive investment. And with passive investments, you're at the mercy of the market. And this is where our, our idea for scalable capital was led. It was, you know, active managers underperform the market 85% of the time. There's not much value there. Passive investments are at the mercy of the market. Maybe we can add an element of risk control on top of these passive investments, which basically could change the risk in your portfolio and make sure it's not one-to-one -one correlated with how much the market is moving. And I'll talk more about this in a bit. So when you're onboarding through our service, it's fully online. So the first step is you have to go through a suitability questionnaire when we ask nine questions which relate to your capacity for loss, your knowledge and experience. And once we get to the result of that, that, that algorithm, which works out how much risk you should be able to take, you're presented with a screen like this. You might see this in, a, in, in, a, in other investment propositions online models where you have uh, how much you want to invest. And you can see on the right, depending on how much risk you want to take, what the long-term risk and return profile looks like. But the main difference to what we're doing to what other people are doing is in the risk category selection here. You'll notice that this number has a percentage attached to it. We're not labeling our portfolio as this low risk, medium risk, or high risk. We're not labeling them as a relative scale from one to 10. Because what does five or six even mean? Does it mean you can lose 20% in your portfolio or 40% in your portfolio in a given year? So we provide a percentage-based number so that you have a better understanding of how much risk is actually in your portfolio. And this 5%, which is one of our lower risk categories, that represents uh, a, a worst case scenario. So in 5% of cases, should you only experience a loss of 5% or more in any given year. So when you're going through our onboarding process, you can select a low risk, 5%, or 15%, and you can see how the, the, um, the risk return profile is changing. But you know that there with a fit, fit, there's a 95% chance that you're not going to lose 15% or more on any given year. Or put it another way, in one in 20 years, you should actually expect to lose 15% or more. And how are we able to do this? Well, what we're doing is we're making dynamic adjustments to the portfolio constantly over time. So on the left-hand side, this is showing an example portfolio which has majority of its risk held in stocks. And what a traditional wealth manager would do is periodically over time, they would make rebalances in the portfolio back to 60% from stocks, for example, 40% bonds, every month making that, that change. We don't really care about the weights, we care about the risk. So that whenever we make a risk projection going forward, whenever we see the risk projection in your portfolio is breaching your risk tolerance, because risk tolerance is one of the main problems when it comes to investing. You need to make sure that you're not breaching it because you have the chance of underperforming. We make an adjustment. So in this example, we've, we've seen that there's a breach on the downside, and we're making an adjustment, which is bringing the risk down in your portfolio. We're adjusting your portfolio from majority stocks into majority government bonds. You can see this here with an example. This is our 20% value at risk portfolio, one of our higher risk portfolios. And what it's showing is the allocation in different asset classes on the right-hand side over the last 16 years. And you can see that the allocation is constantly changing. So in periods like the financial crisis, even though this is a higher risk portfolio, when we're making those forward-looking risk projections, we've actually s switched the allocation from majority from high-risk assets, which is the darker color here, completely into low-risk assets. And only once that risk comes out of the market do we start getting back into the equity market. 
If you were a traditional wealth manager, what you would see here would be straight lines. You would see 60% in the riskier assets, 40% in the less risky assets. So it is a really great uh, visual example of, of what we're doing in the background. So what allows us to do this? You know, what is the, what's the secret source? It's to do with a feature in the market which is called volatility clustering. And I'm sure you've all experienced it. It's that periods of low volatility are followed by periods of more low volatility. And more importantly, periods of high volatility are followed by periods of more high volatility. So what we're doing is, when we're looking at each asset class, we're looking at what's happened in the past and making a projection of what's going to happen in the future based on movement itself. Returns aren't predictable. If, a market, if, a, if an asset goes up today, it's 50-50 if it's going to go up or down tomorrow. But if a market moves a lot today, then there's a better than 50-50 chance that it's going to move a lot again tomorrow. And we use this feature in our model to be able to keep the risk in your portfolio constant over time. And we're doing this by using simulations. So this is the type of technology that we used to use in the bigger banks. So I was working at Goldman, and we provide this for, for sovereign wealth funds. But we would do it using the mainframes of the, of the bank, and we would, we would have one or two people that are constantly 100% you know, focused on that account. That account might have a billion dollars to manage, and we would make sure that we're providing them with this kind of uh, improved asset allocation model. Well, to the cloud computing, we're able to take that technology and we're able to put it in the hands of regular retail investors. And it's because this feature of movement is predictable that when we make these forward-looking simulations, we can make these dynamic adjustments. And I talked a lot about risk. And with risk, um, it's a very important part of what we're, what we're doing. And it's kind of the opposite of what typically people are talking about. They always talk about returns. But risk is important for three central tenants. One. With the scalable model, we want to give you a better understanding of how much risk is in your portfolio. We want to make sure that you know, look, there's a 10% chance that I'm not going to lose, oh, there's a 5% there's a chance that I'm not going to lose 10% in my portfolio. And we make sure that that's constant over time. By, by having this understanding and knowing that someone's making these dynamic adjustments, you actually end up in a situation where you have less stress. You're able to sleep at night because you know that there's a model which is working, which is based on financial, uh, quantitative financial research and empirical data to make optimal changes in your portfolio relative to your risk tolerance. So you can sleep and you know that there's somebody who's making these decisions for you, so you don't have to. And most importantly, we want to provide you with a better risk-adjusted return. We don't just want to get you out when the market gets too risky and you can't tolerate that risk anymore, which is one side of it, but we also want to make sure that you're taking enough risk. So when the market is very quiet, we're getting you back into it because the risk that you have in your portfolio is the currency which gives you the, the reward. And we want to make sure that if you have a certain risk tolerance, that you're working that risk in the market to provide you with that long-term reward, which you deserve. So we're upstairs today on stand 47. Uh, if you're kind of interested in what we were talking about, um, you can see our iPhone there as well. So although everything we're doing uh, is complicated in the back end, uh, everything for the front end investor is very, very simple uh, across web, iOS, Android. You know, we do all the hard work so you don't have to. You can um, worry about the more important things in life. So we're upstairs, stand 47. Um, you, know, you can have a look at what we're doing. It'd be great to, to talk further. Thank you very much.